There are really two methods for coming up with the numbers for doing your recuts. The first method we'll be discussing is actually taking measurements just as if you were going to make a custom shirt. And these numbers, uh, in this particular example, we have an X of 16. Now, calculating the numbers of the 16 won't mean anything to those who are not enrolled in the complete pattern making course. Uh, they won't affect how you do a recut. Now, you can see the yoke is 19 inch. The chest is 42. The waist is 34. The hip is 42. And I came up with an armhole of 20. How I did that is I took the measurement around the armhole, just as you see in this graphic. This will give me a guideline. I know that my armhole will have to be 20, 21, 22, right in that area, depending upon how large the armhole is now. There's only so much you can do uh, with what you start with. And then we have the shirt length measurement. Most shirts are longer in the back than they are in the front, and I'll show you that process. Now, the waist length. Waist length, waist length normally is determined by taking one fourth the height. In this case, the uh, customer is six foot tall, which is 72 inches. You divide that before, and you get 18 inches. And that will be the waist. Eight inches below there approximately will be the hip area. And then you'll have the shirt length. Cuffs can be the same on both sides or smaller on one side, depending upon whether they're wearing a watch or not. Now, Ease. Ease is the big word that most people have a little problem understanding. Ease is the space or the amount of difference between the actual body and the garment. So if you calculated the exact body measurement, the individual wouldn't be able to move. So depending upon how you like the looseness or the amount of extra fabric is the ease. Now you see a number here. I've rounded that number, but I'm going to show you how I came up with it. Most custom shirt makers will use seven or eight inches of ease. Some of the old timers in the old age used to use ten inches. They like a real full cut. So know your individual. Someone who's uh, very thin, 140 pounds, and is uh, almost like a skeleton would probably need six inches of ease. If a man weighs 400 pounds, I don't think you're going to be putting six inches of ease or seven inches of ease uh, on that individual uh, because of the love rolls and where the flesh is moving around. So you have to kind of observe the customer. Now, we need to calculate the ease before we can calculate our total numbers. In this particular case, we're going to go with 7 inch ease. Now, the formula will work anything. Maybe you want to use 6 inches. Maybe you want to use 8 inches. Maybe you want to use 9 inches of ease. But the formula will be the same. In this particular case, I have 7 inches of ease, which I'm going to convert. I have 7 inches of ease times 2.54. Now, 2.54 centimeters is equal to 1 inch. Now, in this particular case, I came up with 17.78 uh, centimeters plus 2.54, which is 1 inch. Now, this number will be divided by 2, so that's why we have to add 1 inch of ease. Now, the number came to 20.32. I divided that by 2. It came up with 10.16 centimeters. Now, you notice I rounded the nearest number. I could have put 10.2 if I wanted to. But I decided to go with whole numbers. It's easier to work with. Now, you can see the tape down there. Uh, I've included a little tutorial here for those who don't know how to read uh, centimeter tape. Most tapes today have inches on top and centimeters on the bottom. The reason I use centimeters is because they're whole numbers. Uh, instead of here saying 1 and 1 eighth or 1 and 1 sixteenth, here I would go with 2.54, which is equal to 1 inch. So be aware of that. Now. In our example up here, uh, we'll start with the yoke at 19 inches. And we multiplied by 2.54, came up with 48.26 centimeters, divide that by 2, 24.13. Now I could have just rounded to 24 if I wanted. Uh, I added 2.0 centimeters, which is equivalent to 3 quarters of an inch uh, seam. So I came up with 26.13. And I'll show you how that works. Uh, the chest is the same, times 2.54, came up with a whole number, divided by 2, 53.34. I added 10, 10 centimeters of ease. I came up with a number of 63.34 and came up with my final number when I divided by 2. Now you do this for the waist, the hip. Uh, some people ask me, well, can I use a different? I, I, I wouldn't. I would use the same. In the fitting, I would make the adjustment. Now. If he says he wants less ease, well, then make it 9 or make it 9.5 uh, if that's the case. Now, after you've calculated the whole numbers, what do you do with these numbers? Well, I'm going to show you an actual demonstration on the shirt. 
but basically what you do for example on the chest the final number is 31.67 I would take my tape and I would put it on the center front and I would measure over to the end of wherever that number is going to be so if it ended up being 3.167 here that's where it would be I would then go to the waist and the waist is 26.9 so the waist as you calculated here one fourth the height and if it came up to here and then I would do the same on the hip I would come from center front measure over where the hip is at and then you would connect your dots as they say now this is in general I'm going to show you exactly how to do that there's a lot of details the ins and outs I will show you uh, but master this know exactly uh, where you stand with the numbers uh, if you don't have the right numbers coming out for example if uh, you didn't take the right measurements off a shirt it could add another inch or maybe two inches and I'll demonstrate that when I actually come to the actual uh, demo on that and in the next segment what we'll do is we'll actually take the measurements off a shirt come up with the measurements some customers they're either reluctant to take their own measurements or they don't want to bother going to a tailor or a seamstress and so they'll send a sample shirt that fits them perfect and you can take the measurements right off that sample and I'm going to show you how to do those samples in the next segment okay uh, we're going to be uh, in the next uh, segment here shortly but before we go into that I wanted to show you uh, a graphic of the flat felt seam on a shirt now this is the right side the reason I'm showing is I want you to know where the seam is now normally the seam is sort of if you pull on it you can almost see the stitches when you pull it apart this is the top stitching this stitching stitching here is equivalent to here this is the inside of the shirt on the inside of the shirt you can see two stitches on the outside of the shirt you normally see one inch now occasionally manufacturers uh, use this stitch on the outside now I don't recommend it for most people because the manufacturers have uh, specific information where they have a lot of accuracy in putting these stitches uh, most of us don't practice enough on the outside of the shirt and it looks kind of crummy because we're really just not getting enough accuracy on it so uh, always make sure that this particular ends up on the outside uh, in other words the fold is on the inside of the shirt and the reason I'm telling you that is because when we get to the measuring on the shirt I'll ask you to measure from the seam to the center front and on the back I'll do the same thing I'll ask you to measure from the seam to the center back and normally this is a half inch seam allowance and if you took the measurement to here uh, you're gonna end up short and if you take beyond it you're going to end up long and you're trying to come up with accurate numbers so you give the customer a good fit according to what he submitted if he submitted this shirt you have to give him what he wanted he didn't want it bigger or smaller he wants the exact size on the model shirt that he submitted to you so just be aware of where the seam is at uh, on the outside of the shirt and on the inside here where you have the stitch and you can see this is the part that's been folded over on a flat felt seam now if you have a shirt with overlock or edge stitching on it it's the same it'll look the same on the outside no matter what stitch you use you're always going to see this clean uh, sort of a groove uh, that's your actual seam so that's important and now we'll proceed to the next segment Okay, we're going to go through a, an overview of what happens when we receive a shirt from a customer. And this customer specifies that he wants the measurements taken off this particular shirt. And I'm going to show you what to look for and how to do it. Uh, I have a measurement chart that's included in your tutorial. Uh, you can either copy it or add on to it, but it'll give you a good idea of all the measurements that you need to perform a good recut. And so we'll proceed. We'll start out. Usually when I, when I get the shirts, whether I'm doing the work or not, I take all the measurements. Now, my recut, my definition of a recut is everything that it takes except collar work and cuff work. I do no collar and cuff work for a recut in my price. Now, if they want collar work and cuff work, I'll do that. It's an additional charge. Uh, but usually the uh, recut includes uh, shortening or lengthening. Uh, body widths, sleeve length, sleeve width, uh, anything, armhole circumference, uh, shoulder drop, 
uh, everything except call work and cuff work. Uh, like I said, I can make the call, uh, cuff smaller. It's additional work. Uh, if they want new white collars, I can make new white collars, additional charge. But I'm going to show you all the measurements that I take regardless of whether I'm doing the work or not. So we'll start out by collar. Uh, first of all, in the collar, uh, I, always, uh, I always unbutton the shirt. And I put the collar uh, flat on the table with the button side uh, facing, uh, facing up, uh, just like you see it here. And I'll try to give you some closer views when I can. Uh, so here we have a, a view of, a, of the collar. You can see the button. And what I do is I take the measurement from center of button to center of buttonhole. In this particular case, uh, I have 16 and a quarter. Uh, and that's a 16 and a quarter finish on the neck. Now, while I'm here, what I do is I put the collars together and I find my center back. And I find the center back, and I use a water soluble lot, or, or I have some uh, soap, one of these little soaps that you get at the hotel motels, and I create a 15 degree angle on it, and I mark it. And then I make it pretty pronounced so I can see it. And what I'll do now is I'll put the shirt facing down, and from that center back mark, I'll measure uh, to the uh, to the end of the shoulder because he says this shirt fits you. This is the model shirt. So I get 10 inches. That means his total shoulder width is 20. So I get 20 on that. And that's excluding seam allowances. That's the finished measurement. Okay. Uh, the next thing I do is take the sleeve length. Now the sleeve length uh, is one half the yoke plus the sleeve plus the cuff. So let me get out here a little bit and I'll show you the complete length of what that looks like. So I'll stretch it out, and I'll take it from that mark that I made in the center back. I'm trying to move some of this stuff out of the way so you can see pretty well. I'll take it from center back and to the end of the shoulder and all the way down to the end of the cuff. He says this shirt fits him perfect. It's 37 inch long. So the sleeve length is 37 finished. And at the same time while I'm here, what I'm going to do is at the elbow halfway down, I'm going to measure how wide the sleeve is there. And I get finished, it's seven and a quarter. So uh, I have a mark that says elbow, seven and a quarter. I always put F for finish. You'll add uh, half inch seam allowances onto that measurement when that time comes. Now, uh, while we're here, uh, we have the armhole. And I'll measure on the, on the seam not the top stitching, but on the seam from right along, from top to bottom. And I get 11, and I just double it. And I get, so that's 22 armhole circumference. And that's the measurement. That's why he likes this shirt. That's what fits him. Okay. Now, the next measurement that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, back shirt length. And so what I'm going to lay it flat, and I'll take it right at the bottom of the band of the collar all the way down to the bottom of the shirt. And the measurement is 33 inches. 33 inch shirt length and that's the back. And on the shirt length I have a back, shirt back length of 33. And I'll also take the front. Where do you take the front? Turn it to the front. Where the neck meets the shoulder, down to the bottom of the hand. And I get 31 inches. So the front measurement is 31. I'll put it in for front, 31. Okay. Now we're going to start out with the front measurements. And uh, I would iron it just to make sure you don't get any wrinkles and get some anchor. Remember, you're going to take it from finished seam. I measure it all the way. This shirt fits in perfect. And I'm going to transfer these measurements onto the shirts that he sent me for a recut. So uh, I'm going to go to the front. And always, you measure from the edge of the placket to the end of the seam where it meets the armhole at the chest. 
and I always measure in centimeters. And what I get here is I get, make sure it's laying flat and straight, is 33 centimeters. So the front chest, uh, front chest is 33. And, uh, and then I'll go to the waist. Uh, the waist is calculated normally from the bottom of the band. It's one fourth the height divided by one fourth of the height divided by four. So if you uh, six foot tall divided by four would be 18. So what you do is you put your tape, you measure from the bottom of the band, you would measure around 18. Normally what I'll do is I'll either chalk it. And from there I would go down and I'd measure again from the edge of the band. And I get 29. So 29 on the front for the waist. This is on the front. On the hip, that's the widest measurement from, again, from the edge of the band to the widest part. And I get 30, 33. So his chest and his hip are the same. In this case here, uh, 33, at, 33 at the hip and the front. Okay. So we've had the, we have the collar, we've done the armhole, we've done the front uh, shirt pattern, we've taken the measurements. Remember, those measurements are finished. So these measurements that we've taken, we're going to have to add a half inch seam allowance when we get to the recutting. Now, don't ever assume that the front pattern is the same as the back. So what I'm going to show you is we're going to open the back shirt flat. And the first measurement we'll take is the hip measurement. Make sure everything is flat. Iron it if you have to. I'm going to put my tape from finish seam to finish seam. And I get 63. And again, uh, 63, 63 divided, I have a little calculator I use, 63 divided by 2. So we get 31 and a half. So I'll put 31 and a half. Again, on your form, for the hip, it's 31 and a half. Okay, I'll put it down a little lower and put it on the place. So it's 31 and a half. Okay, now, the waist, you do the same thing. You go down to where the waist is at, and you measure from seam to seam. And in this case here, you get 55 and a half. Again, 55 and a half. Divide by two, and we get 27.7 is closest. 27.7 is the measurement. 27.7 is the measurement. Now the chest, you're going to bring it down. Make sure you lay everything flat. Make sure it's smooth. So you get an accurate measurement from chest where it meets the armhole on the side seam. And we'll take it from finish seam to finish seam, and we get 66. So we have 33, one half of that will be 33. So the back is 33 on the back pattern at the chest level. So just a quick review here, uh, the chest is the same on the front as the back, but the waist on the front is 29, and the back is 29 or 27.7. The hip is 33 in the front and 31 in the back. So the back pattern is smaller than the front. Okay, now. What I normally do is I take the front and the back measurements and divide by two. This way I can apply it to each one. And if one pattern is bigger than the other and you can't get that exact measurement on that front or back, just add the extra onto the other, as long as the total comes out the same. So uh, we've done that. Uh, what we need to do now is uh, we, let's take the cuff measurement just to keep a record of it. So we measure the width. And the width on the cuff is two and seven eighths. So we'll put on the cuff, finish measurement is two and seven eighths. I put an F for finish. The length, it kind of tells how big he is around the wrist. He's only have, he only has one button, so this shirt fits him pretty well around the wrist. He has a big wrist, I would think. So the measurement is ten and a half finished. So wrist or the uh, length of the cuff and I'll put W for width and length would be uh, 10 and a half finished okay 
So at this point here, uh, we have the elbow. Uh, we've got all the measurements that we need uh, to start our recutting. Now, uh, what I'm going to show you is how uh, a little bit of the mathematics and how to apply these measurements uh, to the recutting. Okay, we have two additional measurements that we need to take, and one is going to be the side seam. And measure from where the uh, armhole at the seam meets the side seam, measure from there all the way down. I would follow the seam along just however it curves, follow it down and get a true measurement. In this case, I get 19, so the side seam is going to be 19 inches. Uh, be careful with this, you don't want these shirts to be short and come out of his pants, so the side seam is going to be 19. Okay. Now, one last measurement that I always keep uh, in mind, and uh, it's the uh, button, the cuff, and where the sleeve is attached to the uh, to the cuff. Take a measurement, and I call it, I call it a a wrist measurement. Uh, take it on there finished. In this case, I get uh, four and three quarter. Uh, and this is just to give me a little bit of a help uh, when I'm doing it. So. Uh, four and three quarter would be the finished measurement. Now, off that measurement, we have some uh, pleats, and so I would measure the width of the pleats. And there's two pleats on there. There's two pleats, and each one uh, about five eighths. So I would put uh, plus five eighths pleat times two. So that gives us another inch and a quarter. And when we get to where the sleeve is undone, I'll show you. That'll give you a ballpark figure of trying to get the same width here, uh, especially when the sleeves are gigantic uh, at the wrist or through the elbows. So you need to be aware of that. And uh, so we'll proceed.